Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome back to this Club Fed channel. Yes, it's called Club Fed because if you've been in Santa Rita County Jail and Bryant 850 Bryant Street down in San Francisco and, you know, McGuire Jail and Redwood City and all the all the shitty jails that I've been in and you finally make it to a federal prison camp, you would call it Club Fed too. Okay, so that's what I call it. It was club fed to me. No, it wasn't a country club. Okay, no swim pools and all that. But it was definitely club fed from the from the life I came from. Uh, you've been homeless on the streets before and all that, and you go to prison and you go to a federal prison camp. It was club fed to me, guys. I read your comments. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm out of prison now and I'm making these videos about the federal prison system, mainly the camps, and the lows are kind of the same. Lows don't have a fence, though. Camps don't have child molesters, <laughs> thank God. So, uh, you know, we got those going for us. Uh, this video is about the First Step Act. So um, this First Step Act was passed by Trump a couple of years ago, and uh, it did a few things. Uh, it gave lifers uh, 25 years instead of life, so a lot of people got out. If they had a 20-year mandatory sentence for like drug dealing, I think it switched to 15 years. A lot of those guys got out. And then for the longest time, we're supposed to only do 85% of our time in the feds, and they were only giving people credit for 47 days. It's supposed to be 54 days. So they changed that, and everybody got a week for every year they had already served. So, you know, 10 years was 70 days, and, you know, 20 years was 140 days. Some guys got out early. Uh, me, I got a year, I, I got an extra month, uh, after, after, when I got to the halfway house, they said, you don't have to stay here for six months, you can go home in five, because I, I got out in 19, and, and, and it takes the feds forever to do the math and calculate all, all these First Step Act credits and all that, so I'm going to try to explain a little bit about the earned time of credits that you get for the First Step Act and how you can get out of prison early, so let's go to the B.O. P website that I got going here. This is the First Step Act, uh, the programs. Um, before I get into that, let's read a little bit about what the uh, how to acquire earned time credits. So it says here, all eligible persons earn 10 days of earned time credits for every 30 days of successful participation in your program classes. So um, also it says here, persons. Uh, this is a tough one. To, I'm going to read it, okay, and then I'll. It kind of sounds like bullshit, but persons in the min, in the minimum low risk categories who, over two consecutive assessments, have not increased their risk category shall earn an additional five days of time credits for every thirty days of successful participation in evidence based recidivism reduction programming or productive activities. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Anyways, you can get an additional five days if you've been good for your past two reviews. Every six months they give you a review. It's called a TEAM, T-E-A-M. Not exactly sure what the acronym means, but it's your six-month review. You're supposed to sit down with a unit director, a counselor, a case manager, and maybe the source associate warden. And uh, and they all sit you in the office and they evaluate how good you've been in the last six months or how bad you have been in the last six months. Um, and this, if you go through two of these without getting any shots... Now, a shot is not, they don't shoot you with a gun. A shot is a write-up slip. Uh, it could be anything from walking on the rocks to not tucking your shirt in to stealing chicken out of the kitchen to being caught with a cell phone to gambling to, you know, all, all, all kinds of stuff. Contraband, anything. Little shots, big shots. Um, so, according to them, uh, you can need to be at low risk. So, if I got caught stealing some chicken out of the kitchen, uh, on Thursdays, it's chicken day in the Fed, so they give us a big quarter piece of chicken. 
and a lot of guys want to take it home. And they bring a little plastic bag and they sneak it out the cafeteria. And you know what? It's not a big deal in the camp. Although there's, there's a guard or two that makes it a big deal. But if you had it caught with chicken, that's probably not going to affect your, you, you probably still get the extra five days. They're talking about a cell phone. They're talking about cigarettes. They're talking about gambling. They're talking about selling contraband, things like that. <clears throat> so you can initially get 15 days for every 30 days of successful participation in a program. So what do they mean by a uh, 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 30 days successful participation? Is that 24 hours in a day? Is that an eight-hour class? Because some of these programs, I'm going to go over them here. Some programs are a two-hour class once a week. Some are a five-hour class five days a week. I'm not sure how they calculate it, but let's go over this. So theoretically, you can get up to a year off. Now, what they're going to do is they're not just going to give you a year off the sentence. They're going to give you a year to go to a halfway house or a year to go on home confinement. Now, home confinement means you got to have a landline put in that house, a landline, not a cell phone. And if you live at a farm somewhere and there's no wires and stuff and you can't get a landline hooked up, you, you can't you can't get it. Uh, if, if you got to have a house. If you're a renter, you know, sometimes some landlords don't even want, want you to put a landline in on their property and drill holes and all that. So Because they got to come out and they're going to put a monitor in there. So you're going to wear an ankle bracelet. You're going to get called every two hours on the phone. It's like count when you're in prison. They come by all the time every couple hours and they count you. Well, they're going to count you at home. And um, you need to answer that landline phone. If you miss that phone call, I think you got five minutes to call them back. And if you don't, the marshals will come and they will take you. You better have a damn good excuse. You better have had a heart attack or something while you didn't answer that phone. And they call you at 2 in the morning, at 4 in the morning, at 3 in the morning, you know, all night long. And they'll show up anytime they want to your house and they can search the whole house. Your mother's room, your daughter's room, wherever they, anywhere in that house they get to search. Not just where you live. Not just where you sleep. And, uh, you know, I've heard of a, a guy, he said he'd been there two weeks and on home confinement. And it was a Friday night and it was about 11 o'clock at night. And there was a knock at the door and he's got a Budweiser in his hand. He opens the door and there's the marshal. He's got a Budweiser in his hand. Guess what? They took him, sent him all the right back to prison, and he told me the story. So home confinement, a lot of times they won't even let you go to the store. But you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes they'll let you go to a job. It, it just depends on your probation officer. So, but it's still better than prison. Still better than prison. So you can get up to a year of home confinement or up to a year halfway house, uh, additional halfway house. Because you also get some halfway house anyways. Uh, maybe you get two or three months halfway house, depending on how long you've been there. Our debt people get six months halfway house. Plus, you can get the, another year for this, so you could theoretically get eighteen months in a halfway house. Uh, and a halfway house is kind of like a Motel Six work furlough prison. And as soon as you get there, they want you to find a job. Uh, and I've done some videos on the halfway houses, and some of them can be real hell holes. Uh, and a lot of rules at a halfway house. And a lot of people get thrown out. A lot of people get sent back to prison. So, But it's still better than prison. So they've got a list of all the programs here. And I'm going to go through them here. Let's start here. Let's just go to each one. There's anger management. So with anger management, it's an 18-hour course. It's available at all the institutions, it says. So 18 hours. Uh, it is... And it's a 12-week course, if I remember right, and it's like uh, an hour, hour and a half for each each course. So I don't know for each two hours you spend, does that count as a day for the 30 credits? But anyways, I'm going to go through these programs. Uh, so the next one is Assert Yourself for Female Offenders. And uh, it's for incarcerated women uh, offenders who have been the victim of abuse. And it's eight hours. It's eight hour course. I don't know if that's eight days uh, or one sit down for eight hours. It's available. It looks like all the female locations. Next one is basic cognitive skills. 24 hours of program credits available at all institutions. We got brave residential. It's a 
uh, Bureau Rehabilitation and Values Enhancement. It's a cognitive behavior, so about how you think and how to make choices and decisions. It's 500 hours. That's a good one. 500 hours. Now, I don't know if they're counting the days or what, but 500 hours is a lot of credits. Uh, you can also only get up to a year's worth of these earned time credits. At such a, most you can get off is a year. So if it's... For every 30 days you do, you get 10 days off. It's going to take you three years to get one year off. And that's if you that's if you go every, that's if you don't miss a day. That's if you take a 500-hour course and you go an eight-hour and you take a 16-hour and you do it. You know, that's that's back to back to back to back to back. So you got to be there three years to get a year off. And that's if you're lucky. If the, These courses aren't, the day you get there, they're not just like, Starting some of them started four weeks ago. You got to wait eight more weeks for the next class to start You know and you got to get in line. So this next one Bureau literacy program. So I guess I'm gonna teach you how to read that one's 240 hours It says it's available at all locations. There's a challenge program That one's 500 hours It's available at a whole bunch of USPs here only USPs and I imagine what they challenge. There's a whole bunch about it, but this is all on the BOP webpage. There's cognitive processing therapy, 18 hours, available at all institutions. There's criminal thinking, right decision, wrong decision, 27 hours. It's an odd number. It says it's available at all locations. Dialectical behavior therapy, 104 hours, available all locations. Uh, regulation self, emotional self-regulation, 24 hours of program credit. It says it's available at all of them. There's federal prison industries, so that's also known as Unicor. And these are your jobs, uh, 500 hours you can get for this. And this could be anything from working on the dairy farm at Lompoc to working at the real farm in... Uh, Oregon, Sheridan, they've got a big, giant farm, you know, uh, it could be welding, it could be building furniture, uh, just depends, they, and they don't have a lot of these unicorns left, they're starting to close all these down, they're closing all the factories down, an Allentown kind of song, if you remember Billy Joel, there's a female integrated treatment called FIT, it's a residential program, it's 500 hours, um, it's only available two female locations at the Danbury Low and the Hazleton Low. Not sure who either one of those are. Something called Foundation. Another one for women. It's 15 hours. Oh boy. Looks like all the women facilities have that. Illness Management and Recovery. 60 hours. Available everywhere. Life Connections Program. It's a faith based program. Religious thing, 500 hours, and I've heard about this one. A lot of guys go there from uh, uh, the mediums, USP Leavenworth, USP Terre Haute, uh, FCI Miami, the low, Petersburg, the low. So I guess from anywhere, um, that's 500 hours. There's a mental health step down. I think this is uh, for guys from, like, I worked at the Supermax uh, as a camper. Uh, they one of my jobs is to leave the camp and go cook for the inmates at the Supermax. And uh, they had a step-down unit there because they're not all doing life there. Some guys are going to get out. They're doing a 20-year sentence. So that's 500 hours for that. And I think this was available for those guys because it says here uh, USP Atlanta, USP Allenwood. Well, they have a program like that at the Supermax, step-down. National Parenting from Prison Program. Probably for women, but uh, in today's world, who knows? Um, it's 40 hours, available at all locations. Non-residential drug abuse program, I took that. It's 24 hours, yeah, and that was like a six-week course, eight-week course, two hours a pop, something like that, 24 hours. So, you know, since we went once a day, uh, I remember they told me if I took that, I was supposed to get... 30 days off in a halfway house. This is before the Step 1 Act occurred. 
There's occupational educational programs, and there's a whole bunch of those. They're 500 hours each, available everywhere. And this is all from your skilled trades. Welding, heating, ventilation, refrigeration, highway construction, wind turbine technology, a um, whole bunch of pro apprenticeship programs, things like that. Uh, there's post-secondary education, 500 hours. So these are guys trying to get their AA and their bachelor's degree. So you actually get credits for that too. Uh, it's available at about 15 different uh, lows and mediums and camps here. And residential drug abuse program, that's the RDAP. Well, you get a year off for that. Plus you get 500 hours of program credits. Uh, so plus you get six months halfway house. And uh, you have to look. There's. I'll show you in another video, or I have done it, where RDAPs are located. No camps in California have RDAP, guys. You're gonna have to. If you're in California, you're gonna got got to go to another state if you're at a camp to get RDAP. We got a Resolve program. It's behavior therapy program. Looks like it's for women. Maybe not. It's 80 hours. It's available all kinds of places. About 40 camps or 40 prisons have it. Sex offender program. You know what? I don't even care about those guys. Boy, they're giving them 500 hours, but they don't qualify for the earned time credits. I read that. I can find it in here, but they don't. They don't get the. It's, don't get me started on these guys. Just take. You know, Lorena Bobbitt, what she did to her husband. That's what they should do. All those guys. Cut it off and throw it in the weeds and leave it there. Um, anyways. There's a skills program, residential, and uh, that one is takes a year, and it's 500 hours. Uh, there's uh, social skills training at 60 hours, uh, available at all locations. Stages program, high-intensity cognitive behavior therapy for serious mental illness and personality disorders. Everybody needs that. That's 500 hours. Wow, and that's available at Florence. Uh, H, I must play high. I was at Florence. And, oh, FCI Florence. So that's the medium and Terra Hot uh, So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They need that there. Threshold program, faith based program focused on values and life skills. I've heard of that one at 72 hours. And there's the rest of that. So. I also want to tell you guys about that First Step Act that uh, if you're doing a year and a day, forget about it. Don't even, you know, nothing's going to apply to you. You're going to, you're going to, a year and a day, you're, you're going to get too, you're going to get uh, too much good time. So, and they're also going to give you like a month halfway house. You're going to be out of there in nine months. You got to have time to do these programs. So, plus you got to have your six month review and the feds just don't instantly calculate all your credits and go here on Tuesday, you get, get this. These guys are slow. They don't want to, a lot of these guards, these case managers, stuff, they don't want to work for you. It's going to take them a year to do the math, to figure out your time credits. And then, and then they got to get a hold of a halfway house. that has got room for you. Or if you have home confinement, but then somebody's got to go check out your house first, probation or the marshals go check out your house first. And see if there's alcohol there. See who lives there. Is there a landline there? They got to prove all that stuff first, right? And that takes months. They just don't go out on Tuesday and get it all done by Wednesday and tell you to pack your stuff. So if you're doing a five-year sentence or more, this is probably a, a good way to get a year off. Because it doesn't take you three years of, of programming just to get the year off. And that's if three years of programming are available where you're at. Not every prison's going to have three years of programming. You got 18 hours here, like I read, 24 hours here, 80 hours here, 100 hours there, 500 hours here. That's all got to add up. So if you're doing a three-year sentence, uh, you're going to be lucky, you know, to get a few months off. Um, if you got a five-year sentence and you're doing RDAP, you're already going to get a year and a half off with the RDAP and about, you know, another year good time. You're doing half time. Uh, you might be able to get another six months off of the five-year sentence, uh, like a three-year sentence, and you don't have RDAP, yeah, you might at least get six months worth of credits. Three-year sentence with RDAP, you're not going to have time to do any other credits. 
So this first step back really is helping. The guys with five years or more, that that's probably what who this is for. So it's not everything that it's said to be. Um, although, go to the BOP website, BOP.gov. Check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends. Thank you, guys.